Blog Talk Radio. blogtalkradio.com As everybody knows, Business Credit Radio is the voice for credit and financial professionals worldwide. Our sponsor for this evening is once again Credit Management Association. This evening show is partially brought to you by the Credit Management Association proud affiliate of the National Association of Credit Management that has helped business-to-business companies with their credit, collections, and financial decisions since 1883. Contact CMA at www.creditmanagementassociation.org for more details on how CMA can benefit you. much to our friends at CMA for sponsoring our show. My name is Philip Philbin and I'm the host for Business Credit Radio. I have two co-hosts with me this evening. That's Mr. Eddie Sumar from beautiful sunny Southern California and Mr. Rick Balgaman from the Mile High City in Denver. <laughs> Say hi guys. Hi Phil, hi Rick, hi to our listeners and to our guests today. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Phil. Thank you very much once again for having a good... Let's hope we have a great show this afternoon, and welcome, everyone. Well, we will have a great show if we can get our callers to call in. So pay attention out there, callers. Here's how you do it. You dial 347-989-8342. That's 347-989-8342. Your phone number and your area code just pops right up in my studio as soon as I see it. I'll bring you on live, and you just tell me who it is you want to speak to. I'll call you by your area code number to identify you. So tonight, today we have indeed honored to welcome Mr. Ronald I. Levine, an attorney in the New York, New Jersey metropolitan area, extending over four decades, and has been an important force in protecting the rights of individuals and businesses. He is currently the chair, New Jersey State Bar Association Special Committee on Consumer Protection Law, has served the public in many capacities as an elected official, public defender, zoning board member, town council member, and municipal judge, Midland Park Borough, from 1988 to 1994. He is the lead attorney in his firm of three attorneys. He is also involved in many charitable activities involving higher education and other causes. He is currently board attorney for the New Jersey Ski Council and is past president of McGill University Alumni Association of New York. He has been specializing in bankruptcy at his law firm for over 25 years and has seen it all. I'm sure he can answer your questions on just about anything related to consumer credit issues, and bankruptcy. So today's program discussion is personal bankruptcy, which is right for you. Welcome, Ron, to the show. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction, Phil, and uh, good evening to Eddie and Rick. Uh, as, uh, as has been very generously related, my name is Ronald Levine, and I'm, a, I'm actually a practicing attorney. I've been practicing for more years than you want to admit in the city of Hackensack, New Jersey, which is about eight miles west of New York City. Uh, my special area of concentration is bankruptcy uh, protection of individuals and small businesses. Uh, we have a concept which, which actually uh, I'll, I'll claim ownership of, and that's called CEDS. And uh, CEDS in our parlance means chronic excessive debt syndrome. 
and we see many people, we see literally people, several people each day come to our office, and they're typically suffering from debt problems. And my six points are ask them are, first of all, does your monthly credit balance get larger each month? The second aspect I look at, do you avoid talking about money with your spouse or friends? Uh, many, many people don't even know how much is owed on their, all their credit accounts. So if you avoid adding it up, that's a, a mark that you have a problem. Uh, another mark is, of course, have you lost track of how much you owe? Uh, the fifth mark would be, are you putting off paying necessary bills, like utilities, mortgage, rent, to pay high credit card balances? And the sixth would be, do you avoid phone calls and fear that there might be a bill collected? These are subjective indicators that your debt is out of control. Uh, as you know, America is a credit economy. Credit starts uh, as soon as you're old enough to sign and, and runs, the rest of your, runs the rest of your life. We have a huge increase in credit now in, in, uh, in student loans. Uh, we have a tremendous credit card uh, outstanding, balances outstanding. The average family roughly, I think about 40% of the population carries balances in, on their credit cards each month from month to month. Uh, and between credit cards and medical bills and perhaps auto deficiencies, uh, many, many of our consuming public, unfortunately, is in over their head. Uh, the estimate is somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of the population is in so much debt that they can't possibly afford to pay it back. Uh, as a professional, under the bankruptcy laws, I, we, we help people to try and manage, manage their credit. Many, many, uh, under many circumstances, we can eliminate it. Now, the, the primary law in the United States to deal with credit is the bankruptcy law. Bankruptcy is a, is a very interesting phenomenon because there, there's a tension back and forth between give the, give the guy or gal a fresh start, give them a break, let them start over again, and the other is grind them into the ground and do whatever terrible things you want to do with them. Uh, bankruptcy, if you, if you go as far back as the Old Testament in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, there was something called the sabbatical year. Every seven years, all debts got wiped out. And there's even commentary on that which says that you should lend as generously in the sixth year as you would in the first year. So there's a trend going all the way back thousands of years in which uh, we're commanded to release people from debts. On the other side, the word bankruptcy uh, is actually, and it comes from Italian derivation. It means to break or rupture uh, the bench or bank of a, of, a, of a guildsman, a tradesman. And so the other people in the field would know this person wasn't paying uh, his debts. So that's you know, you, you, if you break his bench, nobody else is going to give him credit. He'll be out of business. Um, and that's, that's where the word bankruptcy comes from. Uh, the United States, of course, it goes back a couple hundred years. Bankruptcy is one of the few, one of the things actually mentioned in the United States Constitution, and that was reserved to the federal government. So it's the federal government government that sets up the bankruptcy laws. Uh, they periodically, after the founding of our republic, bankruptcy laws in the 1800s would be put in place for a couple of years when the, when the economy would absolutely be in the crapper. Then after, after a couple of years, they would be repealed. Uh, there was a law in the early in the early 1840s, and a young, young lawyer at that point, by the name of Abraham Lincoln, was practicing in Springfield, Illinois, actually is reported as having and recorded as uh, processing bankruptcy cases in his young practice. Um, there was, in the 1870s, there was another panic. Uh, their bankruptcy law was put in place and then repealed. And finally, in 1898, the first permanent law called the Bankruptcy Act was put in place. And that law is, is basically the same law with some modifications that's in existence now. So for a little bit more than 100 years, we've had a permanent bankruptcy law, and it gives people uh, it gives people the right to reorganize their financial affairs. Uh, in fact, when we go, you go back to the to the seven years sabbatical year, the reason why the term seven chapter seven is given is because that is for most people just a release of their debts, and that's where they got the name seven is from the Bible. Uh, it wasn't called Plan A and B. There really is no Chapter 1 to 6, but Chapter 7 is the one which gives, gives most people a release of, of their debts. Um, chapter 7, there, there are actually four different types of plan which people can go into. 
Chapter 7 is the one we're most go into out of the million and a half families that file each year. Probably 80% are going to be in Chapter 7.